So we're out celebrating the 50th anniversary of Stonewall. Uh, the, the modern gay rights movement kicked off 50 years ago. And in order to celebrate that, we really wanted to come up with a beautiful surprise for our community. So Freedom Oklahoma, Q Space, and Councilman James Cooper are out here painting a mural to celebrate the vibrancy of our community for Pride Week here in Oklahoma City. That's exactly right. It ties it directly into Stonewall. Our theme for Pride this year is Legends and Rebels. And it's an opportunity to really celebrate all the work that's been done here in Oklahoma City to increase rights and awareness about LGBTQ issues. Uh, so much work has been done. These things don't happen by accident. People have to move our government and they have done so much incredible work here in Oklahoma City to do exactly that. Things are better than they were 30 years ago when Pride first started, uh, but we have a lot of work left to do and this year's celebration is a celebration of all the work we've done but also a recognition that there's more left to do for equal rights for our community. When I first realized I was gay, Don't Ask, Don't Tell was the law of the land. Marriage equality was completely unimaginable. Uh, same sex parents that were non-biological parents could not have equal access to their children and we had that changed here in Oklahoma by the brave work of people like Charlene Ramey who took their case all the way to the state supreme court and won uh, by work on the national level with uh, the overturn of Don't Ask Don't Tell and uh, bringing marriage equality all the way to the United States Supreme Court. These are huge gains for our community uh, and we're so proud of them but we know we still have so far to go when there's a ban on trans service members in the military when there aren't federal protections for people like us uh, from being fired or denied a job for who they are. Uh, there aren't federal protections and public accommodations for the LGBTQ community. We have to pass the Equality Act. We know we have more to do. Well, it was important to do it today because, you know, when I ran for office, people told me that schools and uh, public transportation and homelessness and walkability were their top concerns. And as I dug down into those numbers with homelessness and toward places like Homeless Alliance, I found out that 40% of our youth homelessness is LGBTQ. And when I learned that, I was pretty devastated. And that usually happens either because a parent or guardian uh, either kicks out their child, because uh, they have a different interpretation of a particular religious text, or the child is allowed to stay at home, but they're not allowed to love who they love. And so that's pretty, that puts our kids in danger uh, if they're LGBTQ. Uh, especially if they're of color. We know that within 24 hours they are approached by sex traffickers, by uh, drug dealers, and so they're truly in danger. And so whatever we can do, you know, to create a better environment for them, for our youth, um, that's what we got to be doing. I would encourage any uh, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, a uh, person who's looking for a uh, community to reach out to Freedom Oklahoma, to reach out to Q Space, uh, to reach out to the Diversity Center, uh, reach out to them and say, hey, I'm here and where can I be that is, you know, drug and alcohol free? Where can I be where there are other people my age and uh, think and look like me? and I, I think they'll be able to plug them into um, some healthier environments. So the other colors you have, um, for instance, the black and brown, you know, whenever Stonewall happened in 1969, there was this moment where gay and lesbians came together uh, trying to figure out, well, what does this look like now? It's a movement, what do we do going forward? Uh, how do we commemorate the three days of protest and riot that happened at Stonewall. And there was, for the brief moments, the hints of solidarity. But very quickly, a lot of gay men turned their backs on lesbian women. They said, no, I'm sorry, you're, you're still a woman and we think we're better than you. They had borrowed a lot of those old sexist ideas from, from straight men. Simultaneously, a lot of those uh, gay men who were white turn their backs on gay men of color, black and brown, and a lot of lesbians who were white turned their backs on uh, women who were of color. And so by adding the black and brown to the flag, we're saying, yeah, enough's enough of that. Um, same too with the um, light blue you're seeing here. A lot of people turn their back on our trans uh, family and friends and neighbors. And so this flag is one that's pretty universally accepted now as one of uh, we're all in this together.